Welcome back, friends. It's Caleb from the Beat League. Look, I have another exciting video for you guys. And listen, I know the videos I'm making right now are they're really basic. They're super simple. They're there to get you started in Ableton. They're, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's just little tips and tricks that I found that help me in my production. Okay, look. I'm just someone who's self-taught, someone who learned by doing, and I just want to share tips and tricks with you guys, okay? Today, we're looking at chopping up drums. There's a few different ways we can do it. Each of them might have their pros and cons. I just want to show you how I kind of went uh, through the learning process. The first uh, technique we're going to use is just doing it in line, okay, in this arrangement view. So what I'm going to do, load it up, and then um, go ahead and just start chopping up the main pieces. So here we have a snare sound. There's another snare. That's a couple good hats. This right here is a pretty solid kick. Okay, so I feel like I have enough to get this point across, okay? So the way I used to see this in my in my mind, I wanted to literally chop the drums and then I would pull them down and bring them onto another track and I would start to rearrange the way the pieces go together. So this is the first way I'm gonna show you. The cool thing about this is that it's really visual, right? It's a way for you to build out a pattern, sort of like how you would do with like a MIDI with MIDI notes. Okay, let me duplicate that real quick. And then we're gonna go ahead and just hold down controller command to duplicate as we move that around. Let's see. There's another snare that I liked. Let's try that one as a second snare. Okay, so listen, I don't want to go too deep in this. I just wanted to show you guys something um, that you could use, hopefully, a technique you could use to start chopping up drum samples. So you're not just copying and pasting someone else's work into your work, right? You're making it sort of unique. And, and say your bass line doesn't totally fit the drums, you know, here's a way for you to sort of chop them up and, and, and mold them to fit the sound that you're really going for. So now ours is really straight ahead. Right, I'm gonna need one more to complete that. And then let's just control J. And here we have our new, um, our new drum pattern. Let's bring this back. Another technique we could use is open up a MIDI track, get a uh, empty drum rack, pop it in. So now instead of Dr clicking and drag them down to another audio track, we could take these same exact things. Oh, yeah, I have the whole entire pattern. Look at that. But for the sake of, of just talking about it, let's do one at a time. So here we have our drum rack empty cells. We can go ahead and click these and drag them in. So now we have our kick on C1. Okay, so now and the cool thing is using drum rack is we still have control over the size of the sample, right? So we could highlight the rest of them, go ahead and bring them on down and you could rearrange these so that you could arrange those however you want. Like for instance, I want my hi-hat to be here in D1. I'm going to go ahead and just bring it over. So now, and I want this to be this. Okay, and then we need to shorten this a little bit. Nice. Okay, we should be able to drum something out here. Okay, so the cool thing about that is we took those samples that we liked, we loved the sound of his drums, and now not only do we chop it up, but we dump it into a drum rack, and now we can play it, and now we have MIDI notes. Now we can use MIDI effects, now we can sit here and actually just, we could, if we're more comfortable, you know, drawing these patterns out, we can draw them out. 
it's really, really, really flexible. All right, everyone. So I had to do a little bit of cleanup there, but here we have our original drum break from BT. We have our break that we sort of built um, in the audio. Then we have our drum rack that we put together. All right. The last technique I want to show, and remember, there's more. There's more ways we can do this. I'm sure that uh, some of you might have ideas or, or techniques that you use. I'm just showing you three that I use frequently. The last one, I use probably less than the other two, is to go ahead and right click the original audio and say slice to new MIDI track. I'm going to go ahead and keep transient, keep built in, but I'm going to turn off preserve warp timing and let that build. What that does is just creates, um, it slices up the audio into MIDI notes uh, for us to be able to play, just like we did when we built our own drum rack. But Ableton did its best trying to slice on the transients, okay? So now, if I turn back on the metronome, we should be able to quickly drum out a pattern. And you can hear that bleed through, right? Like we can go in here just like we did before and we could adjust how this slice sounds. So those are three different ways that you could chop up drums in Ableton. Uh, these are very important tools to make sure that your drums sound unique and to make sure that your patterns are unique and to make sure that your songs stand out from the rest. So there you have it, three different ways that we could chop up drums in Ableton. I hope this helps you guys remember Really basic, but hopefully really helpful. I like to keep it simple. That's my motto. So I hope you go out there and continue creating amazing content. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to hear it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.